Hello everyone. The topic that I have chosen for my presentation today, today is restoration theater. So before going into restoration period, I would like to give you an overview regarding what was preceding the restoration period and why this restoration period was so special, uh, especially uh, in the English literature. So before the restoration period, uh, I think everyone knows that the Puritan period, it preceded the restoration period. And during the Puritan period, what happened? There was a complete uh, anarchy, complete uh, haphazard condition due to the war fought between the royalists and the roundheads. And we all know this war as the English Civil War. So coming to the royalists and the roundheads, the royalists and the roundheads can be categorized as two groups of people who were in constant opposition with each other during the English Civil War. The royalists were the one who were in support of King Charles the one uh, and they were in support of monarchy. On the other hand, the roundheads were also known as the parliamentarians or the commonwealth people and they opposed the royalists and they were also known as the cavaliers. So coming to the definition of roundheads, why they were known as roundheads? Firstly, as I have told you that they were no, the supporters of parliament and they were in constant opposition to uh, the king that is Charles I and mostly they were Puritans and their hair were cut short. So they were known as the roundheads. And com coming to the time span of uh, the war, it lasted from almost 1642 to 1651. So during this period, the royalists and the roundheads, they fought with each other and in during this period, the Puritans, they had an upper hand. And while they had an upper hand, they tried to suppress all kinds of entertainment. Especially, they had an eye on the drama, the genre of drama. So, in 1642, in 1642, they uh, inflicted a ban upon drama. And also, they were taking control about the political, political situation of England. So what happened? Uh, King Charles I, he lost the battle and he was arrested and in, in the year 1651, 1649, 1649, he was beheaded by the royalists or uh, sorry, roundheads, roundheads or the Puritans. So this war can be also known as the war of the three kingdoms, especially because during this war, three countries were in, in, involved, Great Britain, Ireland and Scotland. And it ended in six, June 1647 with the defeat of the royalists and the custody of the king. And as I have already told you that the king was executed in 1649. And after that, his son, Charles II, he uh, was the immediate successor of the throne. But as the Puritans they took, control, took on complete control over the political situation, then the, uh, then the uh, new successor Charles II, he had to flee to France in 1651. So after the fleeing of Charles II to France in 1651, the leader of the parliamentarians, that is Oliver Cromwell, he became the new ruler of Great Britain. And from then onwards, the Commonwealth period, it began. So during, after the beginning of the Commonwealth period, there was a complete restriction Im imposed by the Puritans upon especially upon the entertainment part and the people who uh, tried to enact in place they were considered as immoral and mostly the actors the actors who were performing in the place they were considered as rogues and also certain strict uh, uh, implications were inflicted upon them such as if the spectators they way they went to what's the place then fines were inflicted upon inflicted upon them so the puritans so they were so much against the genre of drama that the globe theater which was a major theater group uh, in the elizabethan period it was also torn down and also major theater companies they were also closed by this puritan group and also 
the actors they act, the actors however they wanted to enact in the in the place and if they wanted to enact in the place they had to go through certain processes they had to bribe the officials in order to perform so coming to the end of the oliver cromwell government oliver cromwell government it uh, its time span can be said to be from 1651 to 1658 so in the year 1658 a certain incident happened that the death of the oliver cromwell it shook the entire puritan government oliver cromwell was a strong leader of the puritans and with the death of oliver cromwell in 1658 and an environment of uncertainty loomed over the puritan government so his son oliver cromwell's son he was not so strong or he was not as strong as compared to his father and therefore the people of great britain they called charles ii who was in france was who had fled to france after the death of his father and in the year 1660 charles ii he came to the throne in the year 1660 and from that period onwards that is from 1660 onwards the restoration period can be said to begin so after coming to the throne in the year 1660 uh, charles the second he immediately ordered for the restoration of theater so during his banishment um, or during his period when he had fled to france charles the second he had noticed that in france there were the, the genre of drama had it had enjoyed a certain privilege so charles too when he came back to england and restored the or uh, restored his throne he immediately wanted to impl- implement those particular forms and therefore in the uh, after the restoration of charles ii the french influence can be noticed in the drama so the plays after the restoration period were mainly influenced by two notable persons they were bumen and fletcher fletcher that is from the elizabethan period and also mostly the elizabethan writers they had a great playwrights they had a great influence upon the restoration playwrights so the one difference between the commonwealth period and the restoration period was that the commonwealth government they insisted on gravity and decorum in all things and on the other hand the restoration they encouraged levity so that was the main difference between the commonwealth government and the restoration government so coming to restoration drama the most pop, uh, popular form of drama during this period was either the tragedy or the comedy so the tragedy was known as the heroic tragedy and also along with heroic tragedy the heroic play also dominated the scene and the comedy it was uh, restoration comedy it was known as the comedy of manners so the heroic play it dominated the scene till 1680 and in 1680 after the death of charles the second james second he wanted to uh, continue his privilege but what happened james the second he had certain privileges for the uh, preferences for the charles and therefore he couldn't continue his reign for a longer period of time he continued his reign only for 3 years and the restoration drama or the heroic plays or tragedies they mostly dealt with characters who performed extraordinary deeds and dealt with themes of love honor and courage and uh, coming to the form of the restoration drama or sorry heroic play heroic play it was mainly written in rhyming pentameter couplets and it was based on the traditional epic and romance and coming to the dramatis of the restra- heroic play uh, we can say that john dryden john dryden he was the most popular dramatist and for uh, his drama the heroic play also received criticism criticism mainly from persons such as george villiers who criticized it in his play the rehearsal so we can say the heroic play though it continued as a form in the restoration period but it also received criticism and therefore it could not continue its popularity for a longer period of time so what is heroic play heroic play it arose first due to a sharp reaction against shakespearean tragedy now characters characteristics of restoration tragedy can be classified as and the main themes are love beauty and chivalry were the main themes of heroic play love is taken as the most supreme virtue so in a heroic play we can find that there is a continuous conflict between 
the of the character between between what he must choose. Uh, for example, he must either choose love or he must either choose honor. So that is a uh, there is a con conflict 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 between them. So coming to the example, uh, we can say that Anthony in love, Anthony in all, all for love. He he sacrifices his family, friends, and kingdom for love's sake. And heroic play, he makes a person an object of admiration. And in a heroic play, we can notice that a hero is brave and hero heroine is virtuous and fair. And the villain is malignant. And for the aristocratic class, the heroic plays were a source of great entertainment. How? Because it provides an escape world for the aristocracy, aristocracy to provide them satisfaction of doing great deeds. And the main dramatist of heroic tragedy were uh, John Dryden, who had written Aurangzeb, Conquest of Grenada, Tyrannic Love, Thomas Otway, who had written The Orphan, Venice Preserve, then Nathaniel Lee, who had written Nero, The Rival Kings, Nicholas Rowe, his Tamaril, Tamerlin, The Fair Penitent, these are all significant plays. Now coming to comedy of manners, so com compared to the restoration tragedy, the comedy of manners or the restoration comedy, it achieved more success because it was directly linked to Charles II's return to England after nine years of exile. So Charles II, he had noticed in France that the comedy of manners, it was uh, or the aristocratic class, they were more en enjoying the restoration comedy as a genre. So he wanted to continue this form in England also. So he also brought French courts in a fashionable way. So he saw French courts in a fashionable way. Uh, and also the life of the courtier culture and this, he brought all these elements in to England and main factor behind development of restoration comedy we can say that uh, this is the main factor that is he brought the influence of French courts into England and wit and humor these are the main instruments used by the restoration com uh, comedy writers and wit and humor as the prominent qualities and coming to the play w William Congress the way of the world it, it introduced wit in a successful manner and his uh, the way of the world the William Congress way of the world can be said to be the most trademark play from this particular period and his play is also rich in witty blunt and sexual dialogues and also the follies and affectations of the aristocratic, aristocratic class are ridiculed in this play and coming to the themes of comedy of manners satirical use of humor is presented and devoid of, it is devoid of true and passionate love and also conspiracy and intrigue is an important component and proponents of comedy of manners we can say William Weiser is the country wide William Congress the way of the world as I have already told you Oliver Goldsmith she stoops to conquer Richard Brinsley Sheridan's the school for scandal and the rivals these are some of the significant comedy of manners so uh, towards the conclusion I would like to say that though Restoration drama was restored after a time period of almost 17 years by Charles II. But uh, drama, drama, it flourished to a certain extent with the help of the inspiration from Elizabethan playwrights in, during the restoration period. Because during the 17 years gap, there was no significant play produced. Although during the Puritan period, there were certain play, plays produced, but those plays could not be so successful. So, uh, restoration drama was a major force behind the uh, uh, behind the successful successful progression of drama as a genre towards a later period. So that's what, all I want to uh, say. Thank you.